Agatha all along is already ruined. Like, I'm, I'm so freaking mad. Like, like it, it made me sick. I'm literally sick right now. Welcome to Haynes for Heroes, I'm Alex Haynes, and if it's a movie or TV show about superheroes, you know I'm all over it. But episode 3 of Agatha All Along did something just, just so unthinkable that I don't think I can forgive it. Episode 3 also did some really cool stuff, and I'm gonna break that down later, I promise, but just, just for right now, let me be a brat. Spoilers ahead. They freaking killed Sharon, and, and I'm not yelling any louder because my wife is sleeping in the other room, but they, they killed Sharon. Why did they do that? Legit, right after my last video where I said they better not kill Sharon, and then episode three comes marching along and pulls a Game of Thrones on her, which I will admit I respect the hardcoreness of doing that, but still, you don't kill Sharon. We love her. Look at her. Look at her dancing. Look how adorable that is. Like, why would they do that? Ugh. Uh, it's biting me! It's biting me! Uh. I'm telling y'all now, if Sharon doesn't somehow come back to life by the end of the season, I'm gonna put this defenseless pillow through the dinner table! Okay, I'm done being a brat. Let's get to the cool stuff. In the beginning of the episode, the rest of the coven discover the spell that keeps everyone from knowing anything about Teen. It's called a sigil, and somehow a witch had placed it onto Teen to keep witches and other magic folk from knowing his identity. The coven accuses Agatha of placing the sigil on Teen, but of course she denies it, saying that placing sigils on people is beneath her. Now the interesting part for me is when the coven's trying to get information about the sigil from Teen, yeah, like maybe he knows something, but then Agatha just steps in front of him and just starts changing the subject. And I was like, ooh, hold on, this whole episode, Agatha has been way more protective of Teen for some reason. Like she does it at that point, and then she does it later on when Teen volunteers to drink the poison himself since Agatha didn't want to do it. But before he can get to it, she's just like, no! And that got my head thinking, like, what's going on, girl? Now, we still don't know for sure whether Agatha put the sigil on Teen or not. But what we do know is that she clearly has more information about him than she's letting on. And I'm willing to bet that Teen is someone very important to her. Whether it be for, like, personal gain, like, I need to sacrifice him for more power. Or maybe it's something more personal. Which leads me to this next cool thing. We finally finally get a mention of Mephisto in the MCU. We get this moment once the coven reaches the first trial of the Witch's Road, and Jennifer is talking to Teen about not trusting Agatha because she's willing to do horrible stuff, like trading her own baby for the Darkhold. No one knows what happened to the child, but one of the rumors that's believed is that the child grew up to become an agent of Mephisto. So this implies two things. One, that teen could have been the baby that Agatha traded for the Darkhold. Agatha is probably ashamed of what she's done to her baby, so she placed the sigil on teen so that she couldn't be reminded of what she'd done, and this caused her to lose her memory of her son. But once teen finds her back in the first episode, she remembers that she placed a sigil on him, and now she's going out of her way to protect him. I hope that's not the case because I want Teen to actually be Billy, the Scarlet Witch's son, but that's right now this is where the signs are pointing. Two, Mephisto is going to have some type of presence in this series. Now I don't think he'll make an appearance, apparently he's making his debut in the Ironheart series, super excited for that. But maybe Teen is a manifestation of Mephisto's power meant to mess with the witches on the road. And side note, I'm also pretty sure that Aubrey Plaza's character Rio is actually Blackheart, the child of Mephisto. They even mentioned a Black Heart on the list of witches who are supposed to be in Agatha's cousin. So it's like, it's like, it's kind of obvious, but you know, they might switch things up. Who knows? But what do you think is going to happen? Also in episode three, each of the coven, except for Teen, experience a hallucination revolving around a traumatic event from their past. And from these, we learn even more about each of these characters. Like for Sharon, RIP the goat. She was brought back to the first episode of WandaVision, where her husband was being choked by the Scarlet Witch. Alice sees her mother in the sauna, and we learn that something was killing the women in her family and that her mom was trying to protect her. What's killing them? I'm guessing it's some kind of curse, only because of the tattoo that Alice has that's meant to protect people from curses. 
Jennifer sees this man who looks like a priest doctor to me, and he tries to drown her in the sink. And I think he might be an, an ex-husband, or maybe even her father, but like, whoever he is, I think he's the one responsible for Jennifer losing her witchly powers. Because later on, when she can't remember the final ingredient to this potion, she like has a breakdown and she brings up that he took her power. Hopefully we learn who he is in the coming episodes. Agatha sees a crib with a crying baby in it, which actually turns out to be the Darkhold, and she too has a major breakdown. Understandably. This was definitely revealing of Agatha's character for me, because she's obviously feeling sorrow about the loss of her child, and this tells me that maybe she didn't willingly give up her baby like the rumors want you to believe. I'm thinking she was deceived somehow, probably by Mephisto. He's definitely the type of person who'd do that. Maybe she wanted to use the Darkhold to rescue her baby from something. Or maybe she was offered the Darkhold, but through a monkey's paw-like loophole that led to her baby being taken away. So maybe Agatha isn't really an awful person, and this whole I'm an evil witch personality is just an act. Trauma gets to you. The hallucination I was most excited for, though, was Lilia's because of who was in it. Now, Lilia is following this young woman, I'm assuming it's her daughter or maybe a little sister, into this room. And once she gets to the room, the woman is now extremely old and dying. And behind her appears Lady Death. Oh, God, it was exciting. She had the hood and the skull face and it was beautiful. I just absolutely love it when a character from the comics makes a surprise appearance in the MCU. Now I'm hoping we see more of Lady Death and she starts to have a romantic relationship with Deadpool like they do in the comics. Deadpool can break up with Vanessa, it, it's fine. But despite all those cool things happening, I still can't forgive this episode for killing off Sharon. And because of that, episode 3 of Agatha All Along is getting 1 out of 5 hexes. I hate it and I want to fight it. No, sorry, I'm being a brat again. This episode was great, 4 out of 5 hexes. Good job. I'm still mad about Sharon though. If she don't come back, that, 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 that pillow's gonna get it. But what did you think of episode 3 of Agatha all along? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, click on the boxes right here, and I'll see you in a bit.